Welcome to Lesson 16, Holes and Bolts of the SDS2 Getting Started series. Let's begin by surfacing the web of this member. Then I'm going to come in here and add in a few construction lines. Let's start off with a free point, first point perpendicular for the next. Now I've torn off from the model drop down menu hole, I have torn off that whole menu. Let's go ahead and select add, select the material to add the hole to, and now it's asking for a location or add hole point. Let's start right here at the top on this intersection. Now you can see right here that there's this little Y for the Y direction and X for the X direction. Let's begin with the bolt diameter. Of course you can select the available bolt diameters or you can type in another bolt diameter. Hole diameter, hole type, what type of hole is being used. You'll also notice that there is a preferred bolt type. Now this is important to understand. The bolt that's going to be applied will be the type that you have selected right here. And the diameter will be the type that you have selected up here. Now again you have all these change options which of course become available as we um, for the material as we go ahead and continue if there are more materials of the same type. You'll see that there are these warnings and it says right here whole add will fail attempt to add whole off of material. Again that's if you try to add a hole that's off the material it'll go ahead and give you this warning. Next let's expand the whole pattern options. Now this is where this X and Y become important. So right here we located this point. The X direction, that will be going obviously horizontal as we can see. I'm going to type in an X direction here of one and a half. Y direction, so from that point, that's the little red plus sign here, we're going to go down three inches. You can see the system has placed these holes here. So now these holes from this point, one and a half to the right, one and a half to the left. Now you'll also see that we can type in a whole group rotation or you can actually pick a direction. Now what is this down here at the bottom? Well these are the different patterns. Let's go ahead and add in, for example, two rows and three columns. I'm going to select tab. Notice how we now have two rows and we have one, two, three columns to the right, three columns to the left. Right now you can imagine that this center, this red plus sign, is my selected location point. Let's reverse those around. Three and two. Take a look at that. We now see that there are two. And let's change this down from two columns to one. Now, let's look at this direction here, these relative position this same thing it's on the bottom if I go up here and place this on the top we don't see them because the holes are actually off the material on top if I go down here to the bottom right we can see that we have that bottom right side left side centered over here over here so each of these buttons again everything is keying off of with hole pattern that selected point now that I've added in these holes I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK and then I can repeat, if you look at the top left of the screen, the middle button will be the repeat operation. I'm not going to repeat it though. I right clicked and returned. Now it's asking me to verify whole group reference location and direction. Again, this is setting this direction. This will affect your dimensioning routines. We're going to leave this at the center. Go ahead and select yes. And the holes have been added. Now, let's go ahead and add in some single holes. I'm going to add in a few more construction lines here. So I'm going to select the Add operation again. Select the material like we did before. Now, instead of having that reference point on top, I'm going to come in here and add the hole right here at these intersecting construction lines. Now, you'll notice the system remembers the previous pattern. I'm going to open up the whole pattern option and select reset to clear that screen. So now we're down to this hole in the center. Go ahead and hit OK and then now you have a choice and this will affect the way things are dimensioned. 
If I come in here and hit the repeat, it's going to attach all these holes in the group to that first hole. In other words, it's going to group all the holes together. If I go ahead and hit locate and start in a new hole, it will not be grouped together with that previous hole. Let's go ahead and start off with the locate operation. I'm going to go locate, again hit OK. I'm going to go locate, go ahead and hit OK, locate, go ahead and hit OK. And as I go through here hitting these different buttons to locate, you'll notice that a reference comes up, that X and Y uh, coordinate appears. I finish it by right clicking return and now the system is asking me to verify the whole group. I'm going to go ahead and say no, let's locate the whole group dimension up here in the top. Again the direction, if I want to have that X, move that X into another direction, that will affect the way things are dimensioned. Let's go ahead and just do that right here. I'm going to locate over here and answer yes. Now let's go ahead and do the whole add again but this time what I'm going to do is instead of locating a hole each time I want these all grouped together so I'm going to use the repeat command which is the middle button return and now this time verify whole group I'm going to say no let's place it right here at the top and I'm going to return to leave that direction and answer yes to the holes. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the detailing of this. So I'm going to come up here, right click, and then go ahead and create the 2D drawing. So we now see these holes that are added in the 2D. Now again, one thing I would like to point out. We can see that this hole has a three inches there with the one and a half on either side reference to this top point. Now let's look at this one over here. We'll notice that we have the reference point where I located it. Notice that the dimensions are now skewed at 4 and 12 and to each hole from that reference point we see that the system has added in these dimensions. Now look at the difference. Over here on the repeat option, we can see that the holes have now all been dimensioned. There's a 3, 3 on either side back to this reference point. So I'm hoping that you're seeing the difference of using repeat will cause all of these holes to be considered as a group for the dimensioning routines as opposed to using the locate, locate each time. Also the same thing with hole pattern. It considers these holes as a group. Now again, it's very easy to clean up drawings in SDS2 for dimensions. It's just very nice, the better the model is input, the better the results you will get with the 2D. Let's go back to our model now. Now let's take a look at the whole match commands. I'm going to add in here a rectangular plate. Let's go and take this dimension, one foot three and a quarter. Let's go to our model, material, add, and we'll select rectangular plates, locate the member that the plate's going to be attached to, and let's go ahead and put in a thickness of one inch, one foot, what was that, three and a quarter, there we go. And the reference point, we're going to have the reference on the far side, so let's go ahead and have that. Hit OK. Asking me the member needs to be redetailed. System automatically flags members for redetail whenever you make changes to it. So as we zoom in here, we can now see that we have this plate, reference point far side, coming towards us on the surface of that flange. Now, I'm going to use the match command. Now one thing about this match, we're going to be also adding in bolts at the same time. Now what I would like to tell you is that the first material picked will be the one that contains the bolts. Now in this case, it's a shop bolt. It's not a problem. But if you have two members connecting together, the first material that you select, that will contain the bolts on that particular member. So let's go ahead and do a match. We want to select this material and we want to match to this one right here. Right click, select OK. 
Again, System Gazette change all options. It searches all those piece marks. It'll give you a quantity and tell you if you want to change all like members and so forth. Now, go ahead and hit OK. Now, at the top of the screen, you'll see the system is asking, do you want to add bolts? Yes or no? So, for example, remember that point. The first piece of material selected will be the one that carries, that member will be the one that carries the bolts. Now, again, this is a shop bolt, so it's not an issue. Go ahead and select yes. And we can see that we now have the bolts with the nuts coming towards us. I can say no to flip them around the other way. I go ahead and I select yes. And now the system has gone through and it has actually bolted these two pieces together, as we can see right here. OK, next. I'm going to come in here and edit the bolt. And on this particular bolt, notice that you have the ability to set all these different fields, number of washers, the grip, the length. What I want to point out right here is that you have a flip direction that allows you to flip this, these bolts. I can change all the bolts that are in this connection, or I can just change this individual one. And I'm going to also set them to field. Now, I'm point out here, notice the color is kind of brownish. Go ahead and change them to field bolts we can see that they are now a gray. This is a job setup option where you can change the color of these different bolts. Now, you can also tell the system when you match holes to not go in there to add those bolts. So again, where's that? In user options. If I go into the modeling tab, you'll see that there's an option here that says add bolts when matching holes. And let's leave everything as it is at its current default. Now, let's go to the surface of this particular piece. And I want to copy this material. And let's go ahead and locate the first reference point, select this member to copy to, and go ahead and copy this material. Now we just have some holes, and there is no other ply of material. In this case, you have the plate and the web. In this, there's nothing on the other side. I want to introduce you to the bolt commands now. Going to model, I'll come down to bolt. Let's tear that off. You can see that we have an option here to add bolt, which allows you to pick two, three, four pieces of material. And the system will go ahead and add the bolt to that material. I'm going to point out this one here that says add single ply. This allows me to add bolts when there's only one ply or one piece of material. You select the holes that you want to add the bolt to, go ahead and hit OK. And you can see the system has added in those bolts single ply. I can go ahead and change this grip to 6 inches. And then, of course, I can modify this accordingly. And you can see now we have bolts that are added single ply. Then, of course, last but not least, you can see that if we go to model and we go into our material, that there is the ability to go ahead and add in a bolt. So what's the difference? The difference is where it will be displayed in the bill of material. So for example, if I go ahead and add in a bolt as a material, it's going to be located in the material list. If I go in there and I add in a bolt that is using the bolt command, that, for example, field bolt, will be listed differently and that will be in the field bolt section of the bill of material on the 2D drawing. Then, of course, you have an add point to point, which allows you to select two points for that bolt length. That's really what you have with that add to point to point. Okay. Now this was our brief exercise on dealing with these bolt and hole add. I'm going to remove these plates. Now when you add a hole into a piece of material, when I edit this member, when you add a hole, you'll notice that the main material does not become graphical. Remember when we were doing the cut layout and we were doing those fit operations to so that main material? The system would turn that to user graphical, which means that whenever there was a process, that main material would not change because the user has manually gone in there and made an alteration. He didn't make an alteration using the member edit, but instead went through either a material edit or a material operation on that piece. Holes, on the other hand, do not turn a material 
to user unless if I were to come in here and execute the material stretch commands let's go down to material and stretch locate and then put a right click OK and put an area box around these holes go ahead and say yes notice how I can relocate those holes using the stretch command when you use the stretch command which is a material operation on these holes you'll see that the main material then becomes graphical this will now conclude our bolt and hole demonstration